Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kim. If you're new here, say hello in the comments and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more bookish content from me in the future. So today I'm here to talk about my favorite YA books of all time and I am super excited to share these 12 books with you because they were all five star top notch reads that I would highly recommend. The first book that I have here is Sadie by Courtney Summers. This is a mystery thriller that is pretty intense and hard hitting. So just kind of know that going in and definitely look up trigger warnings if that's something that you need to do. But this is about a girl named Sadie who has had a pretty rough life so far. She's bringing up her younger sister Maddie pretty much on her own in this small isolated town, just trying to give Maddie a normal life. So when Maddie turns up dead, Sadie is understandably heartbroken and after a botched police investigation, she heads out on the road with a few meager clues to try to figure out what happened to Maddie and to bring her killer to justice. I loved every single thing about this book. This was like hands down five star read for me. This actually alternates between two perspectives between Sadie and the first person actually on her journey trying to solve the mystery of Maddie's death and Wes McRae, who is a radio personality that starts a podcast about Sadie's journey. He's essentially tracking her journey, trying to figure out what happened to her. So I loved the podcast aspect of this. I thought it added such a cool layer to the story. And although I read this physically, I've heard the audiobook is great for that reason. So it's definitely worth checking out if you like audiobooks. Other than that, I just thought Sadie was such a real and raw character. I felt so much for her. This was like an emotional roller coaster. It was hard hitting and intense. And I thought about it for months after I finished it. Next, we have People Like Us by Dana Melly. This one is also a mystery. It takes place at a boarding school, which is pretty much my favorite type of mystery. And this one centers around Kay Donovan, a star soccer player who basically runs the school along with her gorgeous friends. It's a little bit gossip girly in that way. But this all falls apart when a body is found in the lake on campus and Kay's carefully constructed life starts to topple. She finds herself left with a computer coded scavenger hunt left by the dead girl and at the center of a murder investigation. I thought this was a top notch YA mystery. It's really well constructed. I loved the scavenger hunt portion of it because it felt like you were along for the ride with Kay trying to decipher all of the clues with her and anxiously hoping that she would figure it out before the cops tried to pin her for the murder or found out about these secrets she was hiding about her past. I was completely engaged and entranced by the story and I could not put it down. So I would highly recommend if you like YA mysteries or boarding school mysteries, cause it's definitely worth picking up. Additionally, I thought the characters were really well done. Not only Kay, but the other side characters and their relationships with each other were well-developed and interesting. This also features a sapphic romance and I appreciated that representation in this genre. Next we have Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. This one is a contemporary and a great summer read if you're looking for one. This is about a girl named Emily whose best friend Sloane disappears at the start of the summer, leaving behind nothing but a to-do list of items that she thinks Emily should complete over the summer to get herself out of her comfort zone. Emily is super shy and kind of relied on Sloane and their friendship to pull her out of her shell and make life more interesting. So when she disappears without any trace and Emily is not sure if she's going to return, she feels understandably pretty lost. So this is essentially the story of Emily finding herself and having a pretty epic summer trying to complete this to-do list. This was the perfect YA contemporary in my opinion. I really related to Emily as a character and I loved the list aspect. I love pretty much any book that involves a list, but especially one that provides adventure and pushes the character out of their comfort zone. So this was like an easy sell for me. I also enjoyed that there was a running aspect to this, which was unexpected and kind of cool. Emily turns to running as an outlet for dealing with her feelings about Sloan and finds her strength both physically and emotionally through the sport. And I just really enjoyed that aspect of it for some reason. I thought it was really well done. Overall, this was just a really fun book that ended with a lot of hope 
hope and made me really happy. Next we have Dear Evan Hansen by Val Emick. This is based on the play, which I have not seen, but am dying to. Hopefully when this pandemic is over, I will get that opportunity. But this is about a boy named Evan Hansen who finds himself caught in a lie that he cannot get himself out of. And that is that he was best friends with Connor Murphy, a troubled kid who goes to his school and took his life at the start of the novel. As Evan gets pulled deeper and deeper into this lie and his desire to belong and get recognition from the girl that he likes, he starts to struggle with whether he should tell the truth or not. I loved the concept of this book. I loved how morally gray Evan was as a character and how real and raw and flawed he was. I spent the entire book both cringing at every decision he was making and also sort of rooting for him to be successful. You want so badly for him to just tell the truth because you see him like digging himself deeper and deeper into this hole that you don't think he's ever gonna be able to get out of. But at the same time, I had this like profound sympathy and understanding for why he wasn't being honest because it wasn't just about Evan anymore. Like once he digs himself deeper and deeper, it starts to also be about the people that cared for Connor and the people that care for and trust Evan. So it becomes a lot bigger than himself and he has to struggle with what to do at that point when it kind of gets out of control. I loved this book and I recommend reading it whether you've seen the play or not. Next we have A Very Large Expanse of Sea by Tahira Mafi. This one is also a contemporary and in my opinion this is Tahira Mafi's best book. It does not get enough recognition and it's so underrated. I really wish more people would pick this up. This takes place in 2002 in the wake of 9-11 and centers around a 16 year old Muslim girl named Sharin. She is basically sick of being stereotyped and endures rude stares, degrading comments, and even physical violence at some points in the book because of her race. Then she meets a boy named Ocean who seems to really wanna to get to know her for who she is, but as they grow closer and their relationship develops, a lot of people around school have their opinions about it. There are not enough books about the Muslim experience in my opinion, and I don't think today's teens fully understand the ramifications of 9-11 and how much racism Muslims endured and still endure in our country today. So I think this is an important read for so many reasons. It deals beautifully with topics such as race and prejudice and allyship and how people seem to think that it's their right to tell others how to live their lives. Racism is still present and affects so many people today and Mafi addresses this in an accessible way that brings up great discussions about how even when we have good intentions, we can sometimes put people of color in positions that are uncomfortable or make offhand comments that can hurt them deeply. This is one that I recommend to my students every year and I hope that more people will check this out. Next we have All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. This is another hard-hitting contemporary. This one centers on Theodore Finch who is fascinated by death and spends a lot of time thinking about how he might kill himself. He's dealing with mental illness and Violet Markey who is reeling over the grief of her sister's passing. The two meet at the ledge of the bell tower on their campus and in the moment it's unclear who saves who but it leads to a friendship and relationship that affects both of them profoundly. This book hit me hard. I know a lot of people feel that it's problematic and while I can understand that I also felt like this dealt with mental illness in a very real and raw way which I appreciated. These characters were so dynamic and real to me and their relationship felt so real. I found myself cheering for every one of Violet's highs as she continued to heal and find herself, as well as breaking as Theodore fell deeper and deeper into himself throughout their relationship. This one is absolutely heartbreaking and obviously trigger warnings for suicide and self-harm, but if you can handle the content, this is definitely one that I would recommend. Next we have Little Monsters by Kara Thomas. This one is a mystery thriller, though it could be considered like borderline horror because there are definitely some 
some really creepy aspects to this. But this is about Casey who moves to Broken Falls and she's living with her stepmother, stepbrother and half sister. And she gets kind of pulled into this tight knit circle of friends with these girls, Bailey and Jade, who invite her to everything. Everyone seems really nice in Broken Falls. But then the biggest party of the year rolls around and Bailey and Jade do not invite Casey. Doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but she thinks it's pretty weird. And then Bailey never returns home from that party. She goes missing and suddenly everyone's eyes are on Casey thinking she had something to do with it. This book was so creepy and so atmospheric. I absolutely loved this. I could not put it down. I was hooked from the very beginning and it kept me guessing throughout the entire story. I did not see the ending coming. It was not predictable at all. And I was pleasantly surprised with that because I generally find YA mysteries to be fairly predictable, but this one, despite all the clues, totally shocked me. I also enjoy that this one doesn't have a romance at its center, which is so rare to find in YA, and it really added to the vibe that Casey could not trust anyone around her. I highly recommend this if you enjoy horror or mystery thriller. Next we have The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. This one is a romance and it centers around Daniel, who is ever the romantic poet, and Natasha, who believes in science and facts. They meet one day in New York City on the very same day that Natasha is set to be deported with her family and Daniel sets off to make her fall in love with him. I admit this is totally insta-lovey, but in the best way possible. Yoon's writing is absolutely beautiful. I loved that in addition to getting to hear from Daniel and Natasha, you also get the viewpoints of many of the smaller characters that they interact with throughout the story. Although this was a love story at its core, this is also about so much more. It centers on loss and grief and identity and chasing your dreams and connection and so many things. I also appreciated that this made me think about how much difference a day can make and how much we affect the people that we interact with even in the smallest ways. Next is The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. This one reminded me a lot of Sadie, so if you liked Sadie, then definitely check this out and vice versa. But this is about Alex who turns to a life of violence after her older sister Anna is murdered and the killer walks free. Alex doesn't seem to trust herself around people anymore, but unwittingly gets pulled into a relationship with Jack, the star football player that played a role in the night of Anna's death, and PK, the preacher's kid who befriends her at the local animal shelter. As their lives start to converge, it sets them off on this collision course that changes them forever. <laughs> I loved everything about this book. It had me hooked from the very first line. This is one of my favorite first lines that I've ever read in a YA book. This one essentially is an examination of rape culture and so definitely trigger warnings for sexual assault. But McGinnis does such a great job of cementing these characters and who they are while also keeping you guessing as to who you can trust. This one was intense, hard hitting, emotional, and just blow your mind good. I could not put it down and I thought about it for months after I read it. Next we have We Are Okay by Nina LaCour. This is another contemporary and this centers around Marin who hasn't spoken to anyone from her past life since she left her California coast town months ago with only her phone, wallet, and a picture of her mother. So now months later, she sits in her emptied New York college dorm over Christmas break and is waiting for her friend Mabel to arrive and visit. Mabel is basically going to force her to face up to what happened all those months ago and to all the things that Marin has left unsaid. This is absolutely beautiful. I love Nina LaCour's writing so much. She writes characters and relationships so well. This had a certain meditative sadness to it that really hit me hard. Even though it's pretty short, it really packs a punch and it's a really moving account of grief and loneliness. It's not really plot driven. It's really more like meditative and reflective, but I loved that about it. I also felt like the relationship, the romance, although it wasn't central to the plot, was so 
beautiful. I would highly recommend this if you want something that's just going to make you think and reflect on the relationships in your own life. I felt so much for Marin while I was reading this. It was emotional and hard hitting and just beautiful. Next we have Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. If you have been on booktube for any amount of time, I'm sure you've heard about this book, but this is about Kath, who is a big Simon Snow fan. She writes fan fiction for Simon Snow, which is basically like a play off of Harry Potter. She's pretty well known online for her fan fiction, but in real life, she's very introverted and shy and relies a lot on her sister, Ren. So when they head off to their freshman year of college and Ren wants little to do with her, trying to live her own life, Cap feels a little bit lost and tries to find herself outside of her relationship with Ren and who she is as an individual. I know I'm so basic for loving this book, but honestly, Fangirl is life. This is one of my all time favorite books ever and I could read it over and over again and still love it. I relate so hard to Kath as a character. She is introverted and shy and loves books and is socially awkward and I I feel that. <laughs> Kath also deals with quite a bit of social anxiety her first year as she tries to develop relationships with her roommate and her other classmates and I can also understand that. So I just felt like Kath was me and that just made this book wonderful for me. But in addition, the relationship in this is so cute. It's like hashtag relationship goals. The love interest is just perfect. He's like book boyfriend. If you have not read this yet, you really, really need to. I don't know if everyone will love this as much as I do, but this is definitely worth checking out if you haven't yet. And the final book is Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welsh. This one is a romance that centers around Lena who heads off to Tuscany, Italy as her mother's dying wish to get to know her absent father who she has never met before. When she gets there, she's given a journal that her mother kept when she lived in Italy and she uses it to not only get to know her mother but to explore Italy and all of the good food and arts and everything else that it has to offer. Additionally, there is of course a cute Italian boy to boot named Ren who goes on all of these adventures with her. This was just the perfect, the perfect YA romance. If you have not read Jenna Evans Walsh and you like romance, you need to read this book. This is like being wrapped in a blanket of happiness. It was so, so cute. <laughs> I love books that involve travel and so I loved the aspect of her just getting to know her mother while also checking out the different parts of Italy and exploring Italy along with Ren. And the romance is so cute. Ren is so cute. Everything about this is so cute. <laughs> Definitely check it out if you have any interest. That wraps it up for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more bookish content from me in the future. Let me know in the comments what your favorite YA book of all time is as I would love to chat. See you guys next time.